Hello, I'm Eric Rangel, and this is a preview of my exhibit for VCF East 2020, which will be the weekend of April 26th. So, the title is Ted Nelson's Vision. So, my goal is to introduce people to the concepts that Ted Nelson worked on and uh, compare it to what we have now in terms of hypertext and what was around in the vintage computer era of the 1990s to 2000s, well, 1980s, but going back to 1967 and earlier, 65. So uh, let's walk through this exhibit. So on this panel, I am showing some selected papers written by Ted Nelson. He uploaded this document to the Internet Archive. So what I'm showing is diagrams from 1965 with the conceptual principles and data structures underlying zigzag and Xanadu. For example, this is a zippered list. And then this is showing like the JOT system where successive revisions are just adding to text. And that's very similar to the way append-only logs work in today's decentralized systems. And some other diagrams showing how systems can be composed to represent complex structures. So this is from the ACM proceedings. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how he thinks. And then, um, so he actually coined the term hypertext around 1962 and then worked on how these concepts should be implemented. So on this side, I have what he calls a manifesto. He was very concerned with user experience of computer systems. And as you can see, back in 1977, he was advocating for human-centric design, considering the needs of the users. And he wanted designers to really understand computers so they could design the applications correctly. So before that, his work brought him in contact with Brown University, and he was involved in the um, development of a hypertext engineer editing system. So he um, impressed the professors with his hypertext ideas, but practically they had to make it very minimal hypertext because this was before anyone had ever seen a word processor. And they were focused on editing and printing documents. So this is a photo taken from a book. Well, this is an article by Belinda Barnett, an excellent article, um, giving you some background to the HES and its next release called Fress. Digital Humanities Quarterly from 2010. So this photo was taken in 1969. So you could see a user using a light pen to select text. And um, there were some sophisticated features. Uh, well, it had jump links, one-way jump links, not bi-directional links. The FRES system had the bi-directional links so you could go back. So Ted is known for inventing the back button. Um, so this gives you a flavor of the early systems. And then on this side, I'm showing Ted's vision of hypertext as text in columns connected by bridges. And he built a cardboard model of a computer screen to show what that would look like. So that, that's an example of his thinking, this visionary thinking of uh, uh, you, it, from a literary perspective, like a researcher having to do all their footnotes, wouldn't it be great if you can just go to that footnote and see what it says and the context in which it was said? Because that could really help discussions, discourse, and arguments, uh, scholar, sc yeah, scholarly arguments. So in his selected papers, here is a lecture handout that he put together and I'm showing his uh, really use of design, his illustrations, and 
he's really trying to communicate with the students who took this class about his ideas. And then he put out the book Computer Lib and Dream Machines. Now, I don't own it, but in my, I'm going to make a binder that shows the cover of Computer Lib and on the back side, Dream Machines, because it was very creative. Uh, you have to turn the book upside down to read it the other way to get Dream Machines. But in that book, one thing I'm pointing out is a system he wrote called Jot. And this was actually implemented in fourth on an Apple computer. And there's a demo on the Internet Archive, and I will have it running on an Apple IIc, so people can actually try it out. And it's a very unique way of editing text. Um, it is for a writer, because um, you can navigate by paragraphs or sentences, and very easily and visually um, re rearrange your writing. So it was very innovative, and um, he actually invented a language for describing to the programmers how this system should work, and he called it Lollipop, because of these Lollipop diagrams. And it's sort of an object-oriented methodology, and it turned out that uh, it was known as, it's also a mealy machine, but um, this was a keyboard language where the keystroke, um, based on what it does, it's a state machine about what to do in each key, when each keystroke is received. And uh, yeah, so you could see how he was really trying to communicate with um, the computer community and the artist uh, and um, scholarly communities because he had these unique ideas, and uh, it's based on his life experience, his early formative moments, and he um, has been for the whole, his whole life trying to communicate to whoever would listen and trying to get funding, but unfortunately um, the, the computer industry developed differently. For example, Bill Gates. <laughs> So here is his autobiography, Possiplex, and, and uh, this is a fascinating book because it's uh, parallel um, discussions of, <laughs> it's, it's like a hypertext book where he's trying to express himself and have the context within the book. So like headlines, like defining moments appear, appear throughout. So he's trying to relate all the parts of his life together. Now, on this slide, the focus is, uh, <laughs> I'm calling it a slide, it's not a PowerPoint, it's a board. Okay, so um, my exhibit, I want to focus on the concepts of Xanadu and Zigzag. So I'm introducing his coining of the word intertwingled, how ideas are really connected in many dimensions. So he, yeah, so this is from Computer Lib. The, his diagram of what intertwingled means, and I'm claiming that um, he was very intertwingled with Doug, Douglas Engelbart's ideas, and um, so there was some synergy there. Douglas Engelbart did the mother of all demos in 1968, and uh, he was demonstrating the ability to collaborate with computers and um, the early internet was just like a connection to another university. So Xerox Park was very influential. The Macintosh was built from its principles, and they actually found a hard drive which had a small talk image on it in the dump from Xerox. So Xerox, from a business case, um, they were focused on copiers. They really didn't see the role in information management. And poor Douglas Engelbart, um, he was sidelined, and uh, his ideas really didn't get traction. He invented the mouse, but uh, yeah, the, the rest of his groupware ideas and augmenting intellect, they're starting to be revisited now, um, now that we're in an information age, knowledge management age. So for Xanadu, this is his Xanadu Classic, 
and um, he's showing parts of uh, text from the sources of the Declaration of Independence, where Jefferson got his ideas connected with lines and bridges and different colors. So this is um, from 1979. Now, um, in 2009, he had this demo built, which I will have a live demo of this running so people can move around and see the three-dimensional view of uh, text connected with uh, bridges and for transclusions and links to like sources of ideas. And that's really what we need because browsing the web these days, you're jumping to different things. It's like you're on a surfboard and you're trying to figure out, okay, I, I was interested in this, but something distracted me. So I need to like get a sense where I came from and what things I think are related and my opinion about them. So like it would be great to have my own annotations and there are systems trying to do this, but there's an underlying complexity that people are grappling with. So this um, photo shows Open Xanadu, which is a JavaScript implementation of uh, showing transclusions across multiple source. Like this is a document and another document. So this source came is this came from here. So this is the source of this paragraph. And um, there is, so this is a picture of Cosmic Book, and what's interesting about this is that it had to bypass Windows, uh, the operating system, to get it to display the links connecting words in different windows. Okay, now I'm going to show, uh, in addition to Xanadu Space, um, there is a JavaScript implementation of Xanadu Cambridge. So... That, I will show how you could create what are called Ted Nelson documents, which may not be fully conforming to Xanadu, all the features of Xanadu, but can graphically show the um, links and connections and transclusions. So thanks to Jason Scott for coining that. And, um, okay, so, yeah, Xanadu... Um, so Open Xanadu has a web implementation where you can paste in an EDL, an edit decision list, which has your source documents and the character ranges to bridge. So that can be run from the web. I may do that. I, I'd prefer it to all run without web connectivity, but we'll work on that. Okay, so ZigZag. This is a very unique data structure you could think of it as a hyper spreadsheet. And what's great is there are multiple dimensions to your data and it's, you can have visible connections showing the data arranged in multiple directions. So I'll have a uh, demo of this running as well so people can walk through the, the uh, royal families of Europe and see like um, the dates of birth and their children and uh, you get a, and see the power of that form of data arrangement. Now what's interesting is that Xanadu also can be used as a programming language. So this is a behind the scenes view of Xanadu space showing how Xanadu can program the interactions for this Xanadu space. And I'm gonna have some notes in this binder if people want to go into more detail, I could show them, like what an, like here, I could show them what an EDL looks like. And I can um, also have some printouts. Um, so like there, there are some technical concepts that I'm learning as I go about Tumblr arithmetic and um, enfilade theory. So there's actually a general enfilade theory. So I've done some web research on that because we need to understand these concepts if we're going to build good applications for the decentralized internet that's emerging. So I want to compare like products from the 1990s and 2000s to 
is to see what was implemented at the time. Hyper Studio, I'm going to have an Apple II GS running it so people can play around with it. And it actually came with a microphone, which was innovative at the time because it was the early stages of real computer sound recording, even though there was limited memory. It was the first time that multimedia was emerging. And to see HyperCard was very popular, and there are a lot of stacks on the Internet Archive, so I picked about 20 of them, and they'll have people pick a stack that they're interested in looking at, and uh, it should be a fun exhibit. It's really just to open people's eyes to the possibilities. So uh, if you're in the New Jersey area at the end of April, look up VCF East in Wall, New Jersey. Thank you.